Now this story was brought to my attention by one of our regulars in Club 1999. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, sir. Now, don't always assume I know everything. Yeah, it is good to bring something to my attention. And even if I'm already aware, I'll be grateful. Because I appreciate yeah, any effort you make to keep me on my toes. To make sure I don't miss anything. As hard as I try not to miss anything. Now, let us dive straight into it. Now, Speaker Rebecca Kadaga has been admitted to Nairobi Hospital. And her ailment is unknown. Okay, now of course your, your health status, what you're suffering from is private, okay. However, when you're a public servant, that changes, yeah, because the public have a right to know uh, what's up with you, yeah, are you healthy enough to serve them, etc, etc. Now, most Ugandans are linking her current hospitalization to an incident that happened early this year. And I will give you the facts, yeah, and you'll decide for yourself whether there's a link or not, okay? On 20th January 2019, a very interesting case was filed in the High Court at Jinja. Yeah, Jinja is a major city in uh, Uganda. In fact, after Kampala, Jinja is the second largest uh, town or second largest cosmopolitan area in Uganda. Now, this case, very interesting was filed by a traditional healer. The traditional healer was suing Speaker Rebecca Kadaga for failing to pay him. To pay him for what? Well, the plaintiff, the person who filed the case, says that on the first day of September 1990, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. on that date, the defendant, yeah, the Speaker Kadaga, approached him yeah, at his shrine in a place called Bowala, Buganda Zone. And she was seeking for help and traditional medicine. Okay? And in court papers filed by the plaintiff, he made it very clear what kind of help Madam Speaker was seeking. For avoidance of doubt, let me just quote exactly what was said in the court documents. And I quote, The defendant requested the plaintiff to work on her so that she would be given a big job in the government and also be driven in a convoy like a president. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, my friends, this is Africa. Yeah, and by the way, you may say what is Kumekucha saying about Uganda, but these are the things that happened right here in Kenya. This is an African pro problem, yeah, where people go to seek help. <laughs> Let me just leave it at that. Now, the problem is that the defendant, the person who was seeking help, did not have money to pay for the services at that time. And so they agreed, yeah, the person, the medicine man, traditional healer, whatever you want to call him, accepted to work on her. You know, I'm wondering what this working on <laughs> means, yeah? Anyway, accepted to work on her on condition that she would pay him the minute she got the big government job. And so this traditional healer started his job. And he says he worked on her on the night of 1st and 2nd September 1990. Okay? Now the, the interesting thing here is that he adds, on 3rd September, that's the third day, immediately after finishing working on her, uh, Speaker Kadaga was called by the President of Uganda, Yoweram Seveni, and she was promptly appointed to government on the third. Now, apparently that was just the beginning. Yeah, because this traditional healer says, since that day to date, he has been administering his traditional medicines on Speaker Kadaga. And because of this, she has chalked up quite a lot of achievements. Yeah, big, big jobs. Indeed, Speaker Kadaga is the first yeah, female speaker of the Ugandan National Assembly. Yeah, she made history. And indeed, the traditional healer says, after the first treatment, the, <laughs> shall I just call her the patient, the patient he acknowledged that he had done a good job. He had, he had worked well on her. <laughs> you know, legally, if you take somebody to court for not paying you, 
one of the very effective defenses is that you did not actually deliver. Yeah, where's the evidence that you actually delivered those services? Yeah, where's the evidence that you actually delivered satisfactory services? Yeah, so that you deserve payment. But obviously, this traditional guy does not miss a trick. <laughs> he has it all. Because he even has her acknowledgement in writing. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And I believe you can see it on your screens right now. Now, the big beef yeah, that the traditional healer has is that the speaker has not paid. From 1990 yeah, to today, we're in the year 2019, the speaker has only managed to pay 1 million Uganda shillings. Now, don't get excited. When you convert a million to Kenya shillings, <laughs> it's a very small amount of money. Yeah, in fact, it has often, often been said in Kenya, if you want to feel like a millionaire, cross the border to Uganda and convert Kenya shillings into Uganda. You'll be an instant millionaire. <laughs> For as long as it can last. Anyway, the plaintiff said yeah, that as a result of the above breach of contract, he had suffered special dam damages of which the defendant is liable, must be held liable. And he was praying to the court to do exactly that. Now on your screens right now, you will be able to see what uh, the defendant had promised to pay this traditional healer yeah, once he fulfilled his end of the bargain. It included building a house for him worth a hundred million, yeah, that's about five million Kenya shillings. And you can see the total is 204 million 500,000. But by the time this uh, case was being filed, the defendant had only paid one million. Now, concerning this case, <laughs> I have more questions than answers. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to have answers most of the time, but today I will confess I have more questions than answers. Because for starters, uh, how do you assist somebody to get a big government job? What kind of medicine do you administer? That is witchcraft. Now in Kenya, witchcraft is a criminal offense. Yeah, if you see anybody practicing witchcraft and you have enough evidence, yeah, that's a jailable offense. Now I'm not sure it works in Uganda, but I guess you can use a good language like traditional healer, yeah, traditional medicine, etc., etc., and give the impression that there's a certain pill you're supposed to swallow, and pop you get appointment appointed to government. Yeah, if you're in Kenya, you get appointed CS. Or even you get appointed deputy president. Yeah, to replace the current deputy president. <laughs> DP supporters on this channel, please relax. Yeah, I'm not saying a man should be replaced. I'm just giving an example. So I guess you can get away with, with giving the court the impression that uh, this is the administering of uh, magic pills magic herbal <laughs> medicine so that's one of my big questions and one of my big puzzles however the interesting thing here is that both parties agreed to settle out of court and i'm told they settled out of court yeah they finally finally reached a settlement yeah and anyway if they didn't reach a settlement then i'm assuming uh, this traditional healer would be back to the high court and he hasn't gone back. Now here is the interesting thing. After this interesting case was filed, and after they settled out of court, shortly after that, Speaker Kadaga got very seriously ill. And medical personnel are not quite sure what's wrong with her. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why she was referred to Nairobi. Yeah, because in Uganda we also have excellent hospitals, excellent uh, medical practitioners. Yeah. However, it defeated them. And therefore they referred the case to Nairobi, I guess where there are more specialists. Yeah. And something else, there are whispers that this disease, whatever it is, one of the symptoms is that it has caused her to lose her mind. 
Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So those are the facts. So make up your mind. Decide, are the two linked or are they not linked? Yeah, you make up your mind for yourself. Now, the person who passed on the story to me had a very interesting spiritual explanation. And it is this. Those on this channel know yeah, that we're going through an overturn period. Exposure, judgment. You know, before God judges, he exposes. Yeah, and we've also seen indeed a lot of exposure in Kenya. Exposure, exposure of corruption, exposure of all kinds of things. Yeah, exposure of uh, people uh, getting involved in very evil extracurricular activities, etc., etc. Yeah, and therefore he suggested that this is just part of the overturn yeah, happening throughout East Africa. Because here's a case where a politician has been exposed yeah, very openly with clear evidence in the High Court of Ginger in Uganda that they actually visited a traditional healer. Yeah, or shall I say, witch doctor. Now, believe it or not, Kenyan, witch, uh, Kenyan politicians visit witch doctors all the time. Yeah, politicians right across East Africa visit witch doctors all the time. It is very normal. Yeah, however, when you tell people that story, people brush it aside. They say rubbish, nonsense. Educated people don't do that. People who have gone to school, university level, etc., etc., can never go to visit a witch doctor. That's for poor, illiterate people. Now we have a case in front of us that completely dispels that myth. Yeah, because Lady Rebecca Kadaga is a lawyer by profession. She's a highly qualified lawyer. Last time I checked, for you to become a lawyer, you need to go to school seriously. <laughs> That's why they call each other my learned friend, my learned colleague. Because it is true, they're learned. Yet another person who understands these things, yeah, tried to tell me that in this Ugandan case, the medicine man did not call the client or did not take the client to court in order to get a settlement. They took them to court so that they can be able to get a chance of fixing them. <laughs> How so? You see in a settlement, yeah, which has been forced on you by a court of law, no less the High Court of Uganda, you'd have to be very serious and listen very carefully to what the other side is demanding and try your best to fulfill their demands. And therefore, according to this expert, was the, what they were telling me, is that most probably this traditional healer wanted a chance yeah, to get something, a personal item yeah, that he could be able to use to do things on his uh, client. <laughs> things like landing them in hospital. You see, my friends, no matter how you look at it, witchcraft is of the devil. And the devil does not play by any rules other than his own. And the devil will never be your friend. And the devil does not want any good for you. Yeah, that is the truth. Now in part two of this video, we shall take a closer look at past incidences and cases of witchcraft in East Africa, in Kenya, and even in our neighboring countries. Very, very captivating stuff. <laughs>